here's how you read a complex food label or a complex nutrition label. The totals have to be greater than or equal to the sum of the parts. So the total number of fat is 19 grams. There are 15 grams of saturated fat, 0 grams of trans fat, 1 gram of polyunsaturated fat, and 1 gram of monounsaturated fat. Those are just four types of fat. There's no cause for alarm if the totals for the subparts don't add up perfectly to the total for the group. But there would be something amiss if, if you add up all the parts underneath and they are greater than the total. That might indicate rounding error or a faulty label. So the total number of grams of fat is 19. One gram of fat is equal to nine calories. And that's calories with a capital C. Some, cal some countries or locales will put K CAL, which stands for kilocalories. It's the same thing. A lowercase c calories is the scientific definition of a calorie. That is equal to 1,000. So 1,000 lowercase c calories is equal to a capital C calorie. This is what we tend to use for food. Another name for a capital C calorie is a kilocalorie. So 1,000 lowercase c calories is the same as one capital C calorie, which is the same as one K C A L, so a kilocalorie. But that's just some technical background if you happen to want to know some of the scientific measurement behind it. There are 19 grams of fat. So 19 G, I'm just going to use F for fat. And we multiply 19 grams of fat by the fact that every one gram of fat has nine food calories, then we can get the total number of calories of fat in this food. And some food labels will have the calories from fat subsection, some will just have the total calories. If we do the math here, we get 171 calories from fat. So we see that more than half of the calories for this food come from fat. If you wanted to figure out the percentage, you could just divide 171 by 240 and multiply by 100. So every one gram of fat is equal to nine food calories. The percent daily value here is based off of a 2000 calorie diet. So if you are on a diet that is less than 2000 calories, then those numbers would go up. So if you are on a, calor on a diet that is say 1500 calories, then you have to look at your individual macros your individual nutrient needs and determine what those are. So do not go based off of the percentages, just solely off the percentages because it varies by individual diet. If you're on a 2,500 calorie diet or a 3,000 calorie diet and you want low fat and high protein and high carb, their numbers will be completely different. So this is based on standard recommendations and it does vary from person to person depending on your individual nutrition needs. Another section that is very confusing is the carbohydrate section. Carbohydrates come in various types, and this is one of the more complex food labels. If you're on something like a ketogenic diet or some other diet where you are monitoring carbs or sugars, then it's important to know how to read this section specifically. So as I said earlier, the total number of the subsections has to equal or be less than the total for that section. So the total where this section is 17 grams. Now this might look confusing initially because people who aren't as versed in food labels will add up the one, the 10, the nine, and the four, and they quickly see that that is more than 17 and they are confused on how to calculate something called net carbs. In general, the formula for calculating net carbs is total carbs minus fiber, dietary fiber, minus the sugar alcohols. So the total carbs in this particular food is 17 grams. We're going to subtract away the one gram of dietary fiber and we will subtract away the four grams of sugar alcohol. The sugar alcohol thing can get tricky depending on the specific sugar alcohol. Not all of them are completely truly subtractable. Some sugar alcohols with a high glycemic index can still have some effects similar to normal sugar, so you have to be careful with the specific sugar alcohol. And in that case, it comes down to reading the food label and talking with the dietitian or your physician in terms of how those sugar alcohols might interact with your body. But the general formula is 17. 
for this case, it's going to be 17 minus 1 minus 4. 17 minus 5 is going to be 12 grams of net carbs. Now, 12 grams of net carbs is not always going to be the same as the total grams of sugar. We have 10 grams of total sugar, 9 of which were added. So that's another part that can be a little tricky about the food labels. We have 10 grams of total sugar, 9 grams were added. This does not mean you have to add in those 9 grams. This is a subsection of a subsection. So total, total carbs is 17. Of those 17, 10 are sugars. Of those 10, 9 are added sugars. So that would mean that the difference between 10 and 9 would be 1 gram of a sugar that occurs naturally in some of the ingredients that were not added by the manufacturer. So do not add the subsection of a subsection into your total. So we have our net carbs here, which is 12 grams. And that would be what you'd use if you care to follow net carbs. Some people are on particular diets where they don't worry about net carbs and they would just look at that total 17. Food labels have recently, at least in America, started to add the includes so many grams of added sugar. So the added sugars thing is not new in the sense of manufacturers just started adding sugar to foods. It's new that some of them have to or have started to explicitly state how much sugar they added versus is occurring by other means. Something else to note is that just because a food label has does not have sugar alcohol does not mean it does not contain sugar alcohol. So adding a manufacturer adding the subsection of sugar alcohol is not always required in all foods. So if this food label did not have the four grams of sugar alcohol subsection, then you would not necessarily know to subtract that. The way that calories are calculated concerning carbohydrates is a little bit trickier, mostly due to the fact that sugar alcohols have varying structures and therefore they have varying numbers of calories per gram. Some sugar alcohols have zero calories per gram and some have up to three or even four calories per gram, in which case they are nearly like normal sugars. But the generic formula for calculating calories from carbohydrates when you ignore dietary fiber and you can for now ignore sugar alcohols, the generic formula is going to be this. One gram of carbohydrates and that's just but put an asterisk here because that can be tricky depending on what those particular carbs are. You ignore fibers and like I said sugar alcohols vary but in general one gram of carbs such as one gram of sugar has four calories. So if we were just looking at this right here which is the 10 grams of added sugar or total sugar then ignoring everything else we could find out at least how many calories come from these 10 grams of sugar by doing this. We would have 10 grams of carbs, in this case from the sugar. We would multiply that by the fact that one gram of carbs has four calories and we get 40 calories. But that's going to vary because of various factors and some of the complexities with understanding carbohydrates and their structures. Just like with fats, the percent daily values are going to vary from person to person depending on your individual dietary needs. And then lastly, we have proteins. Proteins have the same per gram caloric content as carbohydrates. One gram of protein is equal to four calories. So in this case, we have four grams of protein. So we can do four grams of protein, multiply that by the fact that one gram of protein has four calories. And then when we cancel out our units, we get that we have about 16 calories from protein in this particular food. And that's just some background on how to calculate it. Those are already done for you with the total number of calories, though some people still like to explore this on their own based on their individual dietary needs. Something else that total beginners should know about nutrition labels is that cholesterol and sodium do not carry calories. 
sodium does not have calories, it can make you feel like you've gained weight after having a particularly salty meal based on the fact that it can cause you to retain water, but it does not mean you've gained fat. You cannot gain fat from sodium because it does not have any calories in it.